Well, good evening to you. Welcome to Word Studies with Pastor. Thank you for taking this time to join in with me as we take note of the Word of God here at Messenger Church. This is a service that we do every Wednesday night where I dig into the Word of God and share those things that the Lord has just spoken into my heart. And so we're going to spend about 15 minutes, maybe a little more, all right, talking about God's Word. But let me invite you and encourage you to tune in every Sunday morning at 1030 and uh, just, just be a part of our worship service here at Messenger Church, all right? Now, you can do that by going to our website at messengerchurch.com and uh, just hit on the live stream or you can go to youtube.com, Messenger Church. You'll see us there. And if you're not able to do that, you can go right on Facebook. We're also there. I'd also like to encourage you, if you miss those services, you can always go to Facebook or you can always go to YouTube. They're recorded. You can watch them at any time. As a matter of fact, we have our own channel on YouTube of many of the sermons and teachings, not only with myself, but the other pastors and guests that have come and been a part of our worship down through time, they're on there also. And I know you'll find something that will encourage you or something that will bless you. And so do that, okay? And I know beyond a doubt that, that something real is going to be taking place in your heart. Also, let remind you that this Sunday evening at six o'clock, we will be going to prayer. Every first Sunday night at Messenger Church is an in-gathering for corporate prayer. Now, we're not able to come into the sanctuary, but that doesn't stop prayer. And so at six o'clock, our congregations in their homes will be joining together, seeking God for his divine purpose and will to be carried out in this time. Now, I know some people to discourage, some people you're tired of being at home, not able to go and come as you please. But you know what? That doesn't stop us from praying. That doesn't stop us from reaching out, whether it's by social media, or telephone calls, and encouraging people that are going through some difficult times. It doesn't stop us from joining together in prayer where two or three gather together in spirit. And so at six o'clock, join in with us. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for the church, all right? I've often said, my friend, the church is the foundation that this nation is built on. If the foundation is shook, the nation is shook, all right? And so let's come together. It doesn't matter what denomination you are. It doesn't matter what church you belong to. We can come together at six o'clock. You say, how long are we going to pray? That's up to you. Pray five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. That's irrelevant. And just, just let's seek God for our, the church, our nation. And there's a deep, deep hunger in me for revival, for the, the greater glory to be manifested in this hour. I believe people need, the ch need to see the church believing for God to do his thing for God's will to be done. So we're going to be praying for that revival, for that great, great move of God that I believe that we're on the verge of seeing. We're already seeing it to some degree, but I don't, I don't believe we've seen the fullness of what God wants to do. And so at six o'clock, why don't you gather your family around, turn the television off, turn the social media off, and let's pray and seek the face of our Father. All right, let's get into the Word of God. I have been dealing with the last couple of Wednesdays on the subject of there is no more waiting. Now, last week, we, we discussed a little bit of what I call, it's my time now. And I, I brought to your attention the fact, in the form of a question, has God ever said he's going to do something? Has God ever given you a promise? Have you been studying the Word of God sometimes, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, something you were reading just jumped out at you? Something just kind of shook your spirit, and you knew right then uh, that that Word was for you, that that Word of God that you were studying, that you were looking at, that there was something that 
was yours at that moment. God was saying, you're going to see that. Well, you know what happened right there is this written word, this logos of God became a rhema word. God took the logos, made it alive, gave a promise to you right into your heart and your life. He gave you a rhema word. Has that ever happened? I've had it to happen to me more times than I can count and thank God for it. Well, what, I, what I'm saying and I'm asking that question for is basically to remind you to remember some things that God has said to you. And then what I want to say now is it's your time right now. I believe that there are people that are listening to me this evening that are going to start seeing some things you've prayed for began to come alive in your family. I believe that because of your steadfastness, your faith, your declaration, your word, that God is going to begin to move and your time is going to be experienced. Now, last week I shared from the book of Psalms, 102 and 13, a verse I really like. And that verse talked about the set time where God has set a time uh, to show you favor. Now, I'm not going to go back into that. I could because I like it so good. But there's a time set for you to experience God in a unique and a special way. Well, this evening, I want us to go to the book of Galatians, and we're going to notice another time. All right, notice this. Paul writing to the church at Galatia, he said, let us, that's the church, that's the child of God, because the word is being written to the children of God here. That, that's what the New Testament is. It's God revealing himself to the church, to the children of God. So the directives that we receive uh, are that the word of God gives is to us, the children of God. So he says to the child of God, let us not be weary in well-doing. In other words, you're doing something for God. In other words, you're living for God in spite of the circumstances around you. Now, anyone that's going to be honest, anyone that is going to be forthright will tell you that there are times that you go through weariness. There's times that you say, God, I just don't know if I can get through this day. I just don't know if I can hold out. There's that spirit of weariness, that spirit of tiredness that just comes over you. I believe there's a lot of people experiencing that now because of the circumstances of our life. Our normals have been turned upside down. And so weariness has began to set in. And yet God said to the child of God, uh, in, in, in well-doing, don't you be weary. Now notice this, notice this. He said, for in due season, say that with me, due season, we shall reap if we faint not. In other words, if we won't let that weariness grow beyond where it is right now to the point that it produces weakness within us, a fainting spell within us, he said, don't do that because in due season, you're going to reap if you don't faint. All right, now, let's stop there for just a moment, okay? Let's look at that word due. Now, we understand, all right, what seasons are all about. But God is saying here, there's something, there's a season that is coming that is due you. That word due there means rightful. In other words, God said, I'm about to give you what is rightfully yours. You're about to experience something that is rightfully yours. It's your right to have it. Now, 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 how could it be your right? Okay, we're going to get to that in a moment. But he not only said due season, not only that it means rightful, but that same word due means deserved. You're going to get what you deserve. Now, now go back, go back. Don't, don't get too hung up on that too much without taking note of the fact. He said, for in due season, we shall reap, reap. All right, that's a good word. We're going to gather in a harvest. We're going to gather in. It's going to be the results of what we've sown. Come into that in a moment. All right. But you deserve it because you've taken the time to invest in the past, 
in what you should invest in, whether it's your, 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 your faithfulness, whether it's your praise, whether it's your prayer, whether it's producing faith by studying the word of God. God said, you're going to get what you deserve. And then that word do you means owed. You're going to get what is owed you. So he's saying here, in due season, we're going to reap. If we just don't faint, if we just don't give out, if we just don't give up, if we just don't get so weak until we don't let faith operate alive on the inside of us, you're going to get exactly what's owed you. Now, when, when I got into that, and, 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 and I got into that definition of due, I got into that part about rightful, had no problem with that, deserved, had no problem with that, but I got to that word owed, and I got to thinking, well, what am I owed, all right? And, and, and this is what I've come to. What you are owed is determined by what you have sowed, all right? Did you get that? What you are owed is determined by what you've sowed. Go back to that now. He said, in due season, you will reap, harvest, all right? Something's coming, but it can't come unless you put a seed in, unless you've sown something. So you're due it, you're owed it, but you're owed it because you sowed it. So my question here now, though I'm believing that God is about to do for you what he's promised he's going to do, God is about to move for you in ways he's promised you that he will move. It's your new season. But what you're going to get is determined by what you sowed because that defines uh, what you are owed. Now get this. Let, let's, look at, let, let's look at that sow there. Now, most of the time when a preacher gets to talking about sowing, people automatically think, oh no, he's going to talk about money now. He's going to talk about giving. No, don't want to talk about that. I could and there's nothing wrong with it. All right. But what we need to understand about that sowing is you get or you reap what you have sown. If you sow mercy, you reap mercy. If you sow grace, you reap grace. If you sow blessings, you reap blessing. If you sow forgiveness, you reap f forgiveness. Are you getting what I'm saying here? All right. So, so, so my due season that is defined is what is rightfully mine, that is defined is what is deserved, that is defined is what is owed. What I'm owed is determined by what I've sowed. And for, folks, I'm, I'm not going to get something out of it, no, no harvest of, of something I'm not sown. Now, if I want mercy, I've got to sow mercy. What is mercy? I, I, I talked a little bit about that earlier in, 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 a, in another session. Mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. You see, if God gave you and me what we deserve, you wouldn't be sitting here uh, listening or sitting there listening and thinking about how good God is and what God's going to give to you. No, no, uh-uh. God, and, and I like that song that Dottie Rambo wrote so long ago. He looked beyond my fault. Woo! And he saw my need. Right there is mercy. In other words, God does not, has not, will not hold against me what I was. He's not going to pull up my past and say, listen, John, I can't bless you because of what you've done. I can't bless you because of what you have said. I can't bless you because of what you've been. Uh -huh. All of that is placed under that blood. And because it's under that blood, God makes a choice to never pull it back up. There's something you need to understand. I know the word of God says that God has thrown our sins as far as the east is from the west. And God will not remember them anymore. But get this, God, God has a memory that he can't forget. He's always going to remember, but he makes a choice. He chooses not to remember my past. He chooses not to remember what I was because when that blood covered it over, got rid of it, God chose not to look beyond that blood. That's mercy. Grace is God's favor on my life in spite of me not always being such a favorable person. 
And that applies to you too, you see. And so I choose to sow mercy. I choose not to react to people in a negative way when they react to me. I choose to show people favor whether I feel like they deserve it or not. Why? Because if I sow it, then I'm owed it because God is the one that established it. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm saying to you, it is my time right now. My due season has arrived. My set time has showed up. But what I receive is going to be determined by the choices I've made in what I've sown what I put in the ground of my life. I want to be blessed, so I'm going to bless somebody. I want to be lifted up, so I'm going to lift somebody up. I want to be encouraged, so I'm going to encourage. And if I decide to operate in bitterness, if I decide to operate in lack of forgiveness, I won't forgive somebody. And this statement I've heard people say, I, I, I'll forgive you, but I'll never forget it. How, how would you feel if God treated you that way? Huh? How? All you're doing is saying, I'm going to hold on in case I need it. I'm going to hold on in case I can use it against you sometimes when things doesn't necessarily go the way I, I want them to go. I know, I know I'm upsetting somebody right now, but you better listen to what I'm telling you. God wants to bless you. God wants to move for you. God wants to do the best that can be done for you. But what you're owed is determined by what you've sowed. That sow and reap law, my friend, is applicable throughout life. Now, let me tell you something. When he saved you, he forgave you of your sins. You became born again. But then from that moment on, you were a son of God making decisions uh, as to whether you would do right or wrong, whether you would forgive or not forgive. It's a different ball game now, my friend. It's a different ball game now. The sow and reap law will continue to go on uh, after you've done things or said things or been things as a child of God. You knew you should have not done. Are you hearing me now? So I'm praising God that due season has come. But, but I, I, I need to understand. Now, let me validate this a little bit more. Galatians 6 and 7 said, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that's what he's going to reap. All right, 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 says, But this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So what is God saying there, you see, in this new season, in this set time? when I'm going to receive according to what I've sown. How much mercy do I want? How much forgiveness do I want to receive? How much love do I want to be able to be brought unto me? It will be determined by how much I do and by how much I give and by how much I manifest. So I'm believing God's going to bless you. I'm believing God's going to heal you. I'm believing God is going to allow mercy and grace to continue to manifest itself in your life. But you know what? The choice is really up to me and you. It's our choice what our tomorrow holds by what we sow in our todays. Are you getting that? Are you getting that? I'm believing God for revival. I'm believing God for an outpouring of the Spirit. I'm believing God for people to be saved and people to be delivered. Folks, this is not the end of the show, what's going on now. What's going on now is God allowing us to have a wake-up call. And let us know just how quick things can turn and people to turn with them when certain circumstances are slammed in their face. If what we're going through now doesn't wake you up, my friend, you're not, you're not asleep, you're dead. That's all it is to it. We're at a time of being awakened uh, to the fact uh, that what God has said is coming is just about to get here. But before it happens, I believe blessings are going to come to your house. I believe blessings are going to come to your church. I believe grace and mercy and, and goodness and love is going to manifest itself. But before it's owed, you've got to discover what you've sowed. And if what you've sown is not according to what you want to receive, dig that stuff up, replant that field, and watch the harvest take place. I'm out of time. I've done gone past 15 minutes here, but you know what? I love you. I love you enough to be honest with you. If I didn't love you, I'd do nothing but sugarcoat you. But I want to tell you, I'm going to tell you the truth because the word of God is the truth. 
and it's truth that sets you free. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of messengers, messengers, your churches. I'll get it out in a minute. Wednesday night word study with pastor. I'm so thankful that you are part of my online congregation. I just may keep this thing up. When, when this is all back together, I, I just may keep doing this. All right. But for now, I got a goal. I love you. Praise God for you. If you need me, I'm here for you. Any of my staff, we're here. I'll be talking to you Sunday morning. I've got a message God's burned in me. I'm going to be preaching Sunday. You'll want to hear it next Wednesday. We're going into the holding pattern. You'll want to hear that one. Goodbye.